about what we've been through and how we've grown and how we brought us through. We think about the struggles that come and you help us to every struggle. We think about, Lord, the many, many times that if you hadn't been there, we would not have gotten a blessing. Today, God, we honor you. Yes, Lord. Yes. This day is about you. Yes. Your love. Yes. Your death. Yes. Sacrifice. Yes. Your blood. Yes. But your power. So help us today, God, as we remember this special day. Yes. Help us continue to remember you. Bless my mind. Bless my mouth. Bless my heart. Lord, let yes. it not be me, but you. Thank you, God. Give you glory. Amen. 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 To God have praise. To him who rules and reigns. To him who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anybody who believes in me will never die, but if you die, you'll live again. Yes. To him who said, I have a name above every name. Oh, my God. Yes. God yes. and glory to our Savior, Jesus Christ. What a special day to focus on Him. We are going quickly into the Word. I ask you to go with me to the book of Colossians. And it is our custom to stand at Shiloh when we read the Word. So I ask you to please join us and rest on your feet so we can trust and believe in the Word that God is giving us today. Colossians. Uh, if you don't know, that's the New Testament. The book of Colossians is in the New Testament. I see all our young people are going out. I'm just giving them an opportunity to get to their classes. Amen. <laughs> Colossians, one of the prison epistles of Paul. And in this letter, Paul lays out power and plan of the resurrection. I'm going to read chapter 1. I'll read from verse 9 to 23. And today, I'm going to read that from the good old King James. If you're following me in another translation, you can just follow along. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers. The word meet is a good old archaic King James word that means able. To inherit the inheritance of the saints in the light, who has translated us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things. Amen. And by him, all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is beginning, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, having made peace through his blood by his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him saying, whether it be things in earth, things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated, enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, and unremovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. That's enough. You may be seated today. We're going to move quickly, and I want you to help me out today as we move into this resurrection me message. Look on your left and your right. Find a neighbor that does not look mean. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah
And if you got enough faith to show up, I'll make sure I show up. So God said, meet me in a place. But then in verse 18, it says, And Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. He said, oh, how much power did he say? All. All power. Now, granted, he said, I got enough power that I can control things on earth, and I control things in heaven. God has enough power to control anything going on in any of our lives. And not only he testified, but the angels testified on resurrection morning. You remember when Salome and Mary, the other Mary, went to the tomb to anoint him in Luke's gospel, chapter 24. If you look at verse 6 and 7, the angel gave a testimony because he's trying to shock some of y'all. When they walked up to the tomb to anoint his body with the spices, the angel said, he's not here. He is risen. Re remember, this is verse 6 and 7. Remember uh, when he was in Galilee and when he yet spoke to you when he was in Galilee and he told you that the Son of Man is going to, is going to be delivered into the hands of, of sinful men. He will be crucified and then rise again. Angels testify, not only Jesus, but sometimes I wonder why we don't question the fact that he said he shall rise again. Talk, Has he gone down and risen before that we don't know about? Why does the text say, see we use this language and we don't understand it. What God is saying is, I'm God and so no matter how far down I get knocked down, I get back up and go back to the place I was and find that place. That word means whenever you call on God, he helps you raise again. But watch this. He don't just raise you up. He raise you up afresh. Yeah. Yes, sir. He takes the baggage out of your life.
followed all the instructions, put it together, and it wouldn't work. I tried everything, read them over again, put it together, and it wouldn't work. My wife happened to be coming through, and I told her, she saw me packing it back up in the box. She said, what's going on? So I told her the story, then she had a nerve to say, but it might be a piece missed in the box. I gave her the evil eye, like, you don't think I thought of that? But there was a piece in the box. When I went to the box, there was a little piece that made the camera hang on to the, to the laptop so it could be stationary. And when I got that little, so I say little piece, look, it was a central piece, but I had to put that piece in order to make everything work. Come on, in case y'all still think I'm talking about my laptop camera, I don't come into the sanctuary right now. Here's what you need to understand. That's how the resurrection works. A lot of y'all want to celebrate Jesus got up and his resurrection power, but he didn't just get up or die just so he could get up. He died so he could give us resurrection power. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
And you got to understand something. Not only did God make us whole and powerful, God's eternal power is what's keeping us. All right now. God's eternal power is what's keeping us. And thirdly, we have to decide to walk in the power. Let's do it again. God made us whole and powerful. Oh, yeah. 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 He didn't just make you whole so you can be a beat up Christian. His eternal power keeps us right here in the text. But we have to decide. Excuse me, stick out. Excuse me, Look, but verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9 is a continuation of verse 8, where he said, I know about your love for God. It's a shame, guys, that I have to sit here and see people who love God but don't use their power. Walk around miserable every day and don't know when he got up. He didn't just he put you resurrection power. Because in Matthew 28, 19, he said, after 18, he said, uh, 18 said, all power is given unto me. Then he said, go you therefore baptized. When I started talking about miracles, he gave you miracle working power. Remember Peter? Yeah. Yeah. In the book of Acts, went to the temple to pray in the ninth hour. There was a man named from birth. And you go to Acts chapter 3, that fourth verse. This man was a beggar. He looked at Peter and John. Verse 4 said, he looked at Peter and John and said, uh, alms. And Peter said, with John, text says, Peter said, look on us. And the man looked, expecting to receive something of them. But then Peter said, silver and gold I don't have. But what I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Don't miss that, guys. He said, I ain't got money, but what I got is more important than more valuable. Some of y'all sit there worried about money when you got a pocket full of resurrection power. I wish I had time to talk to this church. You can shake things up at your house. You can shake things up in your mind. You can shake things up. You may not have a Maserati or a Mercedes. You may not have the best shoes. You may not no red bottles, but there's some red blood that has blessed your life. And you need to thank God. Sit there like you poor. I'm saying you say what you say. I ain't never seen you come in rejoicing. It'll be pushing you around all over your world. I'm saying, no, you got power. Trust this. God gave us his word, which destroys everything. God gave us praise, which can tear down Jericho's walls. He gave us prayer. Prayer can change situations. Some of y'all are crying when you should be praying so God can change the situation. But he said, I had to first make you whole in this day. You know how he made us whole? Because nothing else in the world would work to make you whole. So I need to, I need to tell y'all this. I was only going to preach about 10 more minutes, but don't y'all go nowhere until I did 15. I was holy, but he just told me to tell you that. So I want nobody to say he was, uh, nah. Listen, God wanted to teach you something. You know what happened? From the foundation of the world, he chose, God has chosen people. He chose Abraham, and he thought, I can rule my people through the patriarchs. So then he got uh, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, but they ended up in bondage in Egypt. Then he tried to run his people through Moses. But when he got them in the desert, he said, I gotta get them to the law. So he gave them 10 commands. They didn't follow him. So he gave them more and more and more laws. They didn't follow them. So God said, you know what I'm gonna do? They came to God and said, well, we want a king. God said, I give you a king. He gave him kings, but the kings were evil. We want kings like the other nation. That didn't work. God said, what am I going to do? And after he gave him kings, he said, I'm going to put them in bondage to other nations. He said, maybe that'll wake them up. I'm going to give them a warning. Uh, can I park for a minute? Warnings don't work. Because if some of y'all sitting here right now know that Jesus is the way, and you'll still try to walk out of here without accepting him. You've been warned. You know you're on your way to eternal damnation and act like you don't care about I'm just warning you. A warning gets me. Take heed. Something about to happen. So they tried to warn them. But then they got then the prophets came along. They didn't listen to the prophets. They want to kill the prophets. And finally he got silent. God was frustrated. Y'all know it's 400 silent years in the Bible where God didn't talk to his own people. And finally, Jesus stepped up. This is why we celebrate Jesus. He was sitting there. He said, Dad, I got an idea. I 
He said, let me go down. Yes, sir. Yes. I'll take off my divinity. I'll take off my royalty. I'll dress like one of them. And I'll die in their place. Y'all don't know where to stop. He said, I will die in their place. And finally, we were made whole. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. yes. And look at the text. It says there was nothing else that could save us but Jesus. And we were made whole through Jesus. But first he had to figure out how to get us to the place where we accept him. Verse 10 says that we got to walk worthy of it. And then the verse tells us also that we got to be strong in verse 11. He says, so first of all, I want you to know you've been made powerful and whole. But how you get it is you got to walk worthy of your calling. Don't embarrass Jesus by sitting around whining at stuff that you're not, got, you haven't gotten out of yet. you got to hang in there until God gets you out. Yeah. I'm talking to somebody. Remember the movie Karate Kid? With Daniel Son. Mr. Miyagi. Remember the movie? In the movie, if you haven't seen the movie Karate Kid, it must have been a good movie because they made Karate Kid 1, Karate Kid 2, Karate Kid 3, Karate Kid 4. But there was a scene, if you never watched, I want you to go back and pay attention to the scene. There was a scene in Karate Kid where he was getting, Mr. Miyagi was getting ready to teach Daniel karate, and he knew that he had to make him, you know, wash and wax cars, paint the fence, you know, and, and uh, lift the floor, do the floors. He knew he wasn't going to teach him in a conventional way. Ooh, this thing will preach. I just don't have time. So what he did, he said, I need you to know, before you try to do this, before I take you on the student, you got to watch the scene. Mr. Miyagi bent down, and he started writing in the ground. And he said, Daniel son. Mm. <laughs> That's what he said. That's what he said, walk on left side of the road, safe. Walk on right side of the road, safe. Walk middle of the road, squash. He said, just like karate, Daniel son. Mm. Karate yes, then you be committed. Karate no, then don't do it at all. Karate maybe so. You get squashed. God is trying to tell somebody in here, you're squashing because you're walking in the middle. Either you're going to believe everything God said, or you're going to sit around and cry at night and not grab God's power. How many know if God said he can do it? I'm all in. I believe God can do it. Is there anybody sitting here? What, what's the reason you're not home? What's the reason you're not blessed? What's the reason you haven't gotten there? Because you're walking on the middle of the in here. I ain't talking about, I don't like God. God ain't doing for me. That's because you're getting squashed by not making a commitment. The text tells us you can't hang out there in the middle of the room and think there's going to be a blessing for you. Well, let me close up. And then he said, Paul was telling us to make sure we understood that verse 12 said we got to have gratitude. Gratitude brings the promises and blessings of God. And if you look at the verse from 13 to 15, I gotta hurry, you're gonna read those later. That's when he gave us power. Here is why you ought to believe in your power. Because when you got saved, he said he translated you. My, my, my. When you got saved, you were in the world subject to the devil. Mm -hmm. But once you got saved, you became a new creation. New creation. You were translated new out of the devil's reach. Yeah. I tell somebody something, if the devil all up in your life is because you're out of his reach when you got saved, but you keep walking back in his reach. The devil can't do anything to a believer unless the believer drop his guard and let him ruin your life. Kids on drugs, you pray till they get Kids in jail, pray till they get out of jail. Family not doing right, pray to God, put the family back. I'm talking to somebody right now. Why are you sitting here with all the resurrection power you got? and won't believe everything God my, said. My, my, Second point is God's eternal power is keeping us. Look at it. Verse 15, it says, Who is the image? Talking about Jesus now. He's the image of the firstborn, the invisible God. Yeah. Jesus was God, but he loved me enough that he dressed like me and took my pain. My, my, my. You're walking around in an illness or a sickness or a sin sick situation that's not yours. Jesus already paid for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the problem is, what you're using for power is not working. You're going to run out of power. But there's only one eternal power source. Have I got a witness? That will not run. Let me tell you, Steph Curry is a great basketball player. Best 
Then more, then more events go thing going on. She likes Steph. I like LeBron. But anyway, let me finish. So, Steph Curry is the best three point shooter ever played a game. And you know what? Steph make a hundred and sixty million dollars a season. That's a lot of money. But it's not as much as LeBron. LeBron makes nine hundred million dollars a year. But that's not as much as the goal. Michael, Michael Jordan is worth two point two billion dollars. But there's one lady ain't never picked up a basketball got them all trumped. Know what it is? Oprah. Go girl. You ain't seen no money till you have Oprah money. Oprah is worth two point nine billion dollars. And all that sounds good. And you can buy a lot with that money and that power. But I know somebody who got more than that. He owns the camera on a thousand hills. That would have me. And then he owns the hills. He don't just own the hills. He made the hills. And when he made the hills, he said, I can do anything in your life. Why are you running around worrying about over money when you got eternal power? Your problem is, you think if I hit that pick six, is it pick, is it pick six or pick four? Whose one is it? Whose one is it? Don't be scared because you're in church. You know you got, you got a ticket in your pocket. Come on. is keeping us. And if you look at the text, it says, because he was created before all things, and he keeps all things. Listen to this, don't, don't miss the logic. If God is the one holding all things up, and you belong to him, and he promised to bless you, why are you worried about things falling down? They can't fall. And if they do fall, do you know why people was mad at Jesus? They weren't mad at Jesus because he got crucified or because he was preaching. They were mad at Jesus because every time they tried to knock him down, he got back up. That's why the devil's on your track. Because every time the devil do something in your life, he think he's going to get you from praising and worshiping God. How many want to tell the devil, you can knock me down all you want to, but I'm going to get back. Is there anybody here that says, devil, you might as well quit. I'm going to get back up.
Continue faith. Then he said you got to be grounded and settled. Settle it. Not a make believe. Jesus is my source. No matter how bad it gets. Got to settle. And the last thing he said in this text is, don't be moved from the hope that's in the resurrection. I want to be serious with somebody here. God needs you to need him so he can help you have power. God needs you. I want to close right here. During World War II, there was a statue of Christ at a church in Switzerland that the church, the village was bombed and the residents were relieved when they went out to find out the statue of Jesus was still there. The statue with his hands extended. But upon closer look, they found out the hands had been damaged. They were flying in a special sculptor to fix the statue. But when the sculptor got there, the town people said, no, we don't want you to fix it. He said, why? Jesus has no hands. And they said, because, because, we realized something. After he died, and got up with his birth body, he made me his hands. Yeah. I'm his hands. Yeah. You, you, you want to know if he loves you? I'll tell you. You want to know if Jesus can put the broken pieces of your life back together? Yeah. I'm his hands. I can tell you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You want to know that all the saved folk in here, probably some worse than you, all right now. But God said, come as you are. Yes. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Can somebody say, I'm his hands? Yeah. If, if yeah. his hands get broken, look, I, I, I got enough power to keep going. Every head down, every eye closed. He got up, but don't miss two parts to the resurrection. Ministers come in front. It won't work. Without you. Say it every time the enemy attacks you. You gotta tell the enemy, I can handle it. And then you gotta holler back, I know that's right. When you sit at home and dread drops down on you, I want you to go to a mirror and preach to yourself. And look at yourself and say, you better straighten up. And when self try to talk back, you look in that mirror and say, I can handle it. And then you holler at self, I know that's right. There's nothing you can go through that God can't fix. Every head bowed, every eye closed, just for one moment. Be obedient just for a moment. Ooh, this is the day when God says, don't worry about who you're sitting next to. This is your heart, your salvation. God spoke to you. Then you ought to say, I know that's right. I'm getting out of this mess. While every head is bowed, every eye is closed. You say, Pastor, I need that prayer in my life this morning. I need to know that resurrected Jesus. I want you to lift your hand and put it down. Is there one? All over the center. Just lift your hand. I see one hand in the back. I see your hand. I see your hand. Come on, don't give God praise. Is there somebody else? You say, I'm not dying, leaving this place, and going to eternal damnation when I got a Savior who died in my place. Lift your hand. I'm going to pray for you. Is there one? Is there somebody else? Praise the Lord. I see your hand right there. Come on, y'all. Good job. Come on, just like you can. Somebody else has to come. Maybe you're back to and say, you know what? I need God been treating me so good. I need to come back to the church. If you're back to and say, I want a prayer for rededication. Lift your hand. I'm going to pray with you too. Just lift your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand over there. Anybody who raise their hand, just come on up right now. Don't let nobody, don't let the devil stop you. Don't let nobody, don't give God praise as you're coming up. Come on, come on. Are you ready? Maybe you, you didn't raise your hand, but you thought you should have. Come on up. Nothing can stop you. If you believe in the resurrection power of God. Come on up. It's still coming. Let us give some room. Let us give some room. Let us praise God like this your family. Praise God like this your people. Come on. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Nothing does a 
children. You see, I need to be a member of the church. All I can tell you is shallow is what you see. Everybody is 